Good morning and welcome to the Killick & Co market update. It's quite remarkable how much markets have recovered since they hit a low point in June this year. Here's a chart showing the S&P 500 index in percentage terms over the course of 2022 so far. And you can see that in mid-June, the index did drop below that pink dotted line, which means it had lost over 20% of its value. However, since then, the market has recovered quite nicely and it's now down about 10% over the course of this year so far. This week, the market has had a couple of wobbly days, which does imply that some investors are questioning whether markets can continue to move higher over the shorter term. We've also had some comments in the press about a bear market rally, which simply means that sometimes in a market downturn, sometimes stocks can go higher before going down again. However, there are some genuine reasons for stocks to have gone higher over the last couple of months. Firstly, there have been some signs that inflation is starting to peak, and also the most recent quarterly reporting season was much better than expected. It's impossible for us to say where markets are going in the short term. All we can say is that historically, markets have recovered from every crash that's ever happened. However, recoveries are rarely smooth. And therefore, if you have got money invested in the market and you think you might have a need for cash in the short term, it may be worth having a look at the recent market rally and considering whether now might be a good time to consider making some sales. While most global markets have risen in recent weeks, the story in China is very different. Here's a chart showing the MSCI China index over the last three years, and you can see the index has lost value over this time period. It's down over 10%, but particularly it's down over the last few weeks as well. This week, some key interest rates were cut in China, and interest rate cuts are normally used to support an economy that's struggling. This week, the retail sales data and the industrial production data in China were worse than expected, and that's probably because of China's ongoing zero COVID policy and its ongoing use of lockdowns. If you have got any Chinese stocks in your portfolio, or even holdings in any global companies that make lots of their money in China, please do give us a call to talk about these in more detail. And finally this week, we've had a few bits of interesting data relating to streaming. Firstly, Ofcom published its annual Media Nations report, which looks at video and TV trends across the UK. The latest report showed that in 2021, adults aged 16 to 34 in the UK watched 4 hours and 41 minutes of TV and video per day. Only 53 minutes of this was live TV, 70 minutes was YouTube, that's owned by Alphabet, and 79 minutes was streaming video on demand, or SVOD, so that could be Disney Plus or Netflix, for example. Although some people in the survey said that they were reducing the number of individual streaming services they've signed up to due to the cost of living crisis, most of these people do anticipate signing up again once that cost of living crisis starts to ease. There was also quite a big generational difference in some of the data, with over 65s more likely to watch much more live TV. Over in the US, we've also had some good streaming data there as well. July was a very good month for streaming. In fact, it was the first ever month in which streaming was more popular than cable. On this chart over on the right, you can see some of the most popular streaming services with YouTube and Netflix at the top. Moving on to have a look at next week, it's looking a bit quieter on the corporate calendar and we've got results out from NVIDIA and Salesforce. That's it from us. Enjoy the weekend and we'll see you next Friday.